There are two halves of the story when it comes to setting up remote control. Here we're looking at a diagram of the whole workflow, but if we split it up, there's the control side and there's the camera side. In between those sides is DB Cloud. In this video, we're going to focus on setting up the control side of this workflow. The first thing we need to do is make sure we've got all our necessary pieces. That's going to include a BB1 black box tunnel, a USB to Ethernet adapter, a micro USB power cord with power adapter, an Ethernet cable, a camera controller like this Data Video RMC300A, a laptop, a router with internet connection and one unused Ethernet port, and a working DB Cloud subscription. From your internet accessible router, connect an Ethernet cable to your BB1 box. Then connect the USB adapter to the BB1. The other side of that adapter connects directly to an Ethernet port on the laptop. While we're here, make sure you've got the micro USB cable plugged into the BB1 to a source of power. The next thing you'll want to do is ensure you're able to access the internet using your laptop. Make sure that Wi-Fi is turned off to force the laptop to gain internet from the Ethernet connection. This makes certain that the internet data is flowing through the input of the BB1 to the other side. Next, you'll want to open a web browser window and type in this IP address to access the BB1 admin interface. 172.16.2.1 The default login is admin and the password is six zeros. Then navigate to the cloud setup area and we'll come back to this page momentarily. For this step, we're going to connect the BB1 to your DB Cloud account. Eventually what happens is that the control signal passes through this BB1 to the DB Cloud and then back down to your other BB1, which could technically be anywhere in the world where it can control your cameras. So log into DB Cloud and at the top of the browser, click on hardware, and BB1 devices. Each row here represents a potential BB1 that you can link to your account. If you've got an essential subscription, you'll see two rows which corresponds to two BB1s you can use. If you've got a professional subscription like we see here, you'll instead see six rows, meaning you can use six BB1s. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll only use two BB1s total, which is gonna be one for control, and uh, one for a remote camera. In this video, we'll focus on the one for control. So to link that one, we simply need to copy this auth key uh, and paste it back here into this area. And that basically connects this, uh, this node on DB Cloud to this physical DB1. So to do that, uh, all you have to do is click this button here, which is uh, to copy the quick config, AKA the auth key. Uh, so we click that here, and then we go over here to BB1, and right here where it says paste the quick config code, uh, you can right click in this window and click on paste, and then simply click on save settings, and we see that the auth key has been updated. And to double check that, uh, we see like the last four digits here are 3264, which is the same as this auth key here, 3264. So we know we've done the correct thing. If we navigate to the status tab of the BB1 admin shown here, we can see if the connection to DB Cloud has been successfully made. So we see here uh, DB Cloud is connected and the link is active. And as well, if we go back to DB Cloud here, we can refresh the page and now where it says link for that auth key, it says up. So that helps you verify that the connection has been successfully made. If you've gotten this far, we're nearly finished. Now all you have to do is disconnect your laptop from the Ethernet cable coming out of the BB1 and in its place you'll connect your RMC300A controller or other DVIP enabled controller or laptop using PTZ View Assist. By using a DVIP enabled device or software, you'll be able to easily auto detect the cameras on the remote location. In the future, if you want to connect multiple control devices, you'll need to use a switch to join those connections together to the BB1 as shown in the diagram. 
That's it for this part of the remote camera control setup. Please watch part 2 of this tutorial to learn how to set up the devices on the camera side of the workflow. In that tutorial, we'll set up those devices and then we'll come back to this side and start controlling them right away.